Hello, I'm Robert Moynihan with Inside the Vatican Magazine, and we have with us here today, Terry Beatley, and she is going to speak with us about one of the great problems of our time with great insight, and we hope that the conversation will be of use to many thousands of you out there. Terry, I, I'm happy to have you here today because you met Dr. Bernard Nathanson. And Dr. Nathanson was a very important figure in the history of our country and the history of, in particular of the pro-life question. Can you describe your meeting and tell us who Dr. Nathanson was and why his legacy is so relevant and so important? Well, Dr. Nathanson uh, was the known as the father of America's industry of abortion. Uh, some people back in the early 70s named him America's Abortion King. And it's his legacy is one of complete conversion to the pro-life side. So he was not only America's Abortion King, but he became pro-life, 100% unequivocally pro-life. And then he became Catholic. And what I have found uh, as I've traveled across the United States, there are few people who know his story but most Americans have no idea that the father of America's industry of abortion became pro-life. And the reason why his story, his legacy is so relevant, it's because, first of all, people like stories. And this is a story that converts hearts, uh, convicts hearts. And it's a story, it's a true story that helps people understand that this entire industry of killing babies, it's all based on lies and propaganda. And Dr. Nathanson wanted every American, especially Catholics, to know the truth that he left behind. And you somehow became a friend of Dr. Nathanson. He's now passed away. Mm -hmm. But can you tell us how that happened and how you met with him and what that meeting was like? Well, before my Catholic reversion, I was at a prayer vigil at the Nazarene Church uh, in November 2009. And this was after I had, uh, for a number of years, been studying about Margaret Sanger, Planned Parenthood, um, how she unleashed contraception onto America. And um, I had begun to share this information in Virginia in a number of uh, black churches in Virginia. And the people's response they, they so encouraged me. So I was at this prayer vigil in November of 09, uh, fervently asking the Lord to give me uh, direction on what am I supposed to do with all this information mm -hmm. and these amazing experiences of sharing the racist history of Planned Parenthood. And all I could hear through my prayer was uh, go interview Dr. Bernard Nathanson. And I remember sitting back in my chair and just having this monologue conversation with the Lord saying, God, why would Dr. Nathanson say yes to my request for an interview? I thought it was highly unlikely, but I knew I was supposed to try. So I found his number. I called up to New York. His wife answered and she said, um, she said, Terry, my husband has not granted an interview in well over a year. He's 83 years old. He's terminally ill with cancer. And she said, put your request in writing, fax it up here and I'll present it to my husband. And that's what I did. And to my amazement, uh, she called me back a couple days later and she said, uh, to her surprise, her husband said yes. And she asked me if I could fly up to New York on December 1st, 2009. And that was the beginning of this crazy 12 year journey <laughs> uh, because of a promise I made Dr. Nathanson. Well, I would like you to tell us what happened when you flew up to New York mm -hmm. and came to his apartment and knocked on the door and what was your meeting like? It, it, everything was the complete opposite of what I was thinking. Uh, you know, he had been the father of the abortion industry, the co-founder of NARAL Pro-Choice America. Um, he had trained Planned Parenthood doctors. And so I was expecting this palatial condominium in Manhattan, New York. It ended up being this little efficiency um, apartment. And Dr. Uh, Mrs. Nathanson opened the door and ushered me through this little efficiency kitchen. And there's Dr. Nathanson sitting on a sofa. 
uh, very frail. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he had his little Chihuahua dog sitting on his lap. So for one hour, it was the one hour that changed my life. So for one hour, I sat beside Dr. Nathanson asking him a number of questions that were all pre-planned. And all I can say is if, ta if, if remorse is tangible, mm -hmm. I could have grabbed a hold of it. He was very, very remorseful, regretful of what he had done unleashing this culture of death onto the United States of America. And so at the end of the interview, I asked him, I said, Dr. Nathanson, if you have a message for America, and if you tell me what it is, I promise you I'll deliver it across our country until it becomes common knowledge or until Roe v. Wade is overturned. And I didn't know what he would say, um, but he, he, indeed, he did respond and he said, uh, he said, continue teaching the strategy of how I deceived America and then tell America that the co-founder of NARAL says to love one another, mm -hmm. abortion's not love, stop the killing, the world needs more love, and I'm all about love now. So that is the message that Dr. Nathanson gave to you. You say this was a, an hour-long meeting that changed your life. <laughs> And as you left that meeting, what did you think you should do? <laughs> uh, well, I reached over and I shook his hand. And I promised him I would get this job done. And then his uh, his wife, um, she looked at me and she said, um, she said, well, you know, good luck on that promise, Terry. And she closed the door. And I remember standing, looking at the door, thinking, I cannot believe I just made Dr. Nathanson this promise. So. Um, I left the whole the whole interview felt surreal because and I think it's important for your listeners to understand he was not just one more abortionist mm -hmm. he's the father of the abortion industry which completely changed everything in America there's nobody who's untouched by what he did and so it felt very surreal and for the next 6 months I was a busy homeschool mom so I finished up the homeschool year in the spring of 2010 and then we moved to Fredericksburg, Virginia, um, and that that's the setting that began the next leg of this journey in fulfilling the promise to Dr. Nathanson. And, and it actually began with teaching people in this part of Virginia what the abortion industry, how it's impacted the realm of politics and law. Hi, thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking on that red subscribe button and click that bell so you'll be notified when we upload new content. Check out all the links below for subscriptions to Inside the Vatican Magazine and to the Morning Hand Letters, which is free to your inbox. You stay connected. It's content that you can get nowhere else. All that information is below. Thank you.